This video is part of the course that is GraphQL with Spring Boot. Link for this course is given in the description. Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we will create our very first query with GraphQL in our Spring Boot application. So in GraphQL, we don't have address controller and we don't have get mapping, post mapping like that we used to have in REST APIs. Okay. So here we have query and mutation. Query to get the data and mutation to alter the data that is like create, update or delete. Okay. So that we will see in the upcoming lectures. For now, we are going to create our very first query with GraphQL. So for that, I have created separate package. Okay. And here I am creating one class and I'm giving name as query. You can give any name. Okay. It's not necessary to have this name. So I'm giving query.java that is class. Now the first thing is we need to mark it as at component. Okay. And we need to add this package as a component scan in our main class. So we should not forget this. Otherwise it will not work. So here we will add like at component scan and our package. That's it. So this is required in our main class because we are marking our query classes at component. Now the second thing is how the Spring Boot application will know that this is GraphQL query. Okay. And this is not the normal class. We know, right? In REST APIs, we use at REST controller annotation so that Spring Boot will identify that this is not the normal class, but this is the controller class. Okay. So here in GraphQL, we need to implement GraphQL query resolver. Okay. You will see this interface GraphQL query resolver, not the provider one. My bad. This one GraphQL query resolver. This interface doesn't have anything inside it. Okay. So we don't need to implement any of the methods inside our query class. So here we will write our GraphQL queries. So basically queries are like getting the data. But remember one thing, all calls in our GraphQL application are HTTP POST methods. Say for example, you are getting the data from the query or you are altering the data that is basically create, update, delete inside the mutation. All calls are HTTP POST methods. In REST APIs, what we have, we have different HTTP methods, right? To get the data, we have HTTP GET method, POST, PUT, HTTP DELETE method. Here, all calls, all your queries and mutation that you hit are HTTP POST methods. Remember one thing, all calls are HTTP POST. So you can consider this as a REST controller if you are comparing with REST APIs. Okay. So this is kind of a, you can say controller to get the data. Now in REST APIs inside our controller, we create separate methods, right? For each and every API with the mapping. So the same way we can do over here, like I'm saying, I'm returning simple thing. Okay. String return type saying that this is first query. We don't have any input and I'm returning string return type as first query. That's it. So nothing fancy here. No JSON. We are just returning simple text string return type that first query. That's it. Now here you don't need to provide any HTTP method and mapping over here. See in REST API is what we have for each and every operation. We have separate URI. Say for example, to create the student, we have slash create slash update slash delete. And to get the students, we have get all like that. We have one separate URI for each and every operation in GraphQL. We don't have separate URI for each and every operation. Remember this thing in GraphQL, you just have one URL for your application. That's it. And all your calls to your GraphQL queries and mutation operations are at TTP post. And you will use the same URL of your application for all the operations. There is nothing specific URI for each and every operation in GraphQL. You need to remember this. So here we are having this first query, right? So we will not mark or we will not map it like slash first query. No. So you may be thinking that how then this will work. So that will be done using the schema. So that we will see in the next lecture. So you need to remember this thing that here you don't have any controller like we used to do in REST APIs. 
at rest control annotation no in graphql you have one url of your application and that url only you will use to hit your all graphql queries and mutation operations to create the student to update the students all are on the same url with http post method there is nothing like separate uri for each and every operation like we have in rest apis okay so this is i am saying because this is the difference between rest apis and graphql so that you have better idea and that's why i am saying when you are writing this right have simple or sample spring boot application with rest apis handy so that you can compare as i already explained right we have sample spring boot application with rest apis so there you can compare this so how we created our first query we created one class we implemented the interface graphql query resolver we marked our query as component we provided that package inside our main class with the annotation at component scan this we know right in spring boot we used to do like that and we have our very first query so this is the method with simply returning first query we don't have anything fancy json or any input data nothing as we proceed further in the course we will add it so that you will learn in a better way one by one i am not adding in one shot otherwise you will get confused so this is our very first graphql query in the next lecture we will see schema for this graphql query and this query class if you like the video then please subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell like the video do comment in the comment section and share with your friends do you want to learn graphql if yes then i'm having complete course on it that is graphql with spring boot this course covers what is graphql what is graphql query mutation schema and the difference between graphql api and rest api this course also covers the real time implementation of graphql with spring boot this course also includes how to use project lombok with spring boot application so what are you waiting for the course link is given in the description just click on that link and start your journey of graphql with spring boot we'll see you in the another video till then happy learning and happy coding